Let's talk about ammeter and voltmeter. Uh, as you learn in year 10, uh, we talk about ammeter and voltmeter, of course. And you know for ammeter, it is connected in series. For voltmeter, you connect it in parallel. And the other thing is, uh, if you say there is an ideal ammeter or ideal voltmeter, what happened to that is, it actually means for ammeter, its resistance would be equivalent to zero for ideal one. Not close to zero, but it is exactly zero. For voltmeter, what would that be? That would be equals to infinity. Okay, equal to infinity, not close to infinity. Okay, and uh, the reason is here. Here is a question, try it first, uh, pause the video, and after that, you basically will understand uh, why ideal ammeter or voltmeter will have that resistance. So pause your video now. Okay, so here is the answer. Uh, let me go through that with you first. So first of all, the question set, uh, the EMF of the cell is actually uh, 9V, from here 9V, 9V, and uh, they also tell you that for the resistor and also for the voltmeter as well, as we said for voltmeter, ideally it will be infinity resistant, but then uh, here is not, it's 59. So what we have is a 500K and 500K ohm for each of them. So what you could do is uh, you can simply imagine this is a resistor, but at the same time it has a function that can measure voltage. So what you could do is uh, simply apply the Ohm's law, V equals I L, and V is 9, we just treat the whole circuit as one thing. And uh, for the L, it will be 500K, so 500 times 1000, and 500 times 1000 uh, in parallel. So this is how you do for parallel resistor. And eventually you should be able to find the current, which is going uh, for the main circuit will be 3.9 sorry 3.6 times 10 negative 5 a that will be for part a assuming that the emitter is ideal part b is saying that a student uh, didn't know the voltmeter is not ideal and thought it is ideal instead and so what he or she would, would think and calculate um, the resistance assuming he or she would not know the resistance so using the information of the current how would that student find out the resistance and simply uh, the result if you want you can again use the ohms of V equals I L and then you can use V as 9 I as 3.6 times 10 negative 5 and then keep out as the unknown uh, you will be able to find this all right uh, but I simply get this answer directly because uh, what you could do is simply imagine um, the equivalent resistance of this whole thing, resistor and the voltmeter, uh, will be thought as the resistance of the resistant resistor only. So that's why uh, when you combine them, it's like you divide by two, then it will be 250k ohm in that case. All right. So I hope this example can give you an idea that um, if your voltmeter is not ideal, then it will affect your reading for the current itself. All right, you may say, hey, hey, so what would the reading for the voltmeter itself then? I'll give you three seconds, think about it. What would the reading of this voltmeter here? The answer is, it is still 9V, okay? So for the reading for the voltmeter itself, uh, in this case, it doesn't affect because simply the emitter does not have any resistance. So you are simply having these two parallel and therefore the voltmeter itself still have 9V, which is fine. But what you find out is it will actually affect the reading for the emitter, which of course is not uh, a suitable, I mean, it's not a very good situation in this case. Okay, even though emitter itself is kind of innocent, <laughs> itself is, you know, perfect, but then uh, voltmeter is, is the one that is not perfect. But then in, the case, in this case, uh, because of, the voltmeter itself, it affects the reading of the emitter. Okay? So if you think about that, in a case where the voltmeter has infinite resistance, infinite ohm in that case, 
how would that affect our calculation? It would be here. Okay, can you see that? If the resistance of the voltmeter is actually infinity, okay, I'm uh, in maths, uh, your math teacher will be mad at you if you write this, but uh, I'm just trying to illustrate to you right, how it should look like. So if you have um, the voltmeter as infinite resistance, then this will be 1 over infinite. Okay, and 1 over infinite is actually tends to zero in that case, right? You can just simply use a calculator and try it out. One divide, many, nine, and then you will find it is very close to zero. And so in that case, uh, this whole thing would basically the same as 500k ohm still. And then of course, in that case, then it can of course give you a true reading because the currents that you find out was simply reflecting, um, you know, the equivalent resistance of this whole thing is is still 500k ohm. All right, so uh, that student in that case can evaluate the resistance correctly. Let me give you another scenario which is very similar to see whether you truly understand. Okay, so I basically picked the same simple circuit, um, you know, format, and I have ammeter voltmeter here, and this time let's assume the voltmeter is ideal. And that means infinite resistance, infinite ohm, as you say. Um, and for ammeter, let's say it is uh, 50 ohm. How about that? Okay, for ammeter. And now uh, let's keep it as 9V for the battery. So um, let me ask you, what is the reading? Maybe I'll give you a few parts. What's the reading for of the current A? And part B is what is the reading of voltmeter, and um, maybe I should say just like the, you know, that previous question example, if a student try to pretend both ammeter and voltmeter are ideal, and then what would be the the resistance of this resistor would be in that case the the experimental resistance shall we say that. Yeah, so pause the video now, try it out, and get back to us. Okay, so uh, let me try to do part A first. So uh, since you know ammeter has 50 ohm, this is 100 ohm, then we can apply it. ohm's law again. 9VI is the unknown R. For this, this is a series circuit, so 50 plus 100. And so I would be 9 divide 150. And that would be 0 0.068. All right. Uh, for part B, uh, what's the reading for voltmeter? So uh, since if you remember how the voltage will be shared amongst the series resistor, then uh, you should know that the voltmeter right now is reading the potential difference across this one. So one way, well, I should say easier way you can do is you can use V equals to I which is the one that we find 0 0.06 times uh, the resistance or which is 100 so you find uh, 6V okay you could also use another approach which is uh, using the total voltage 9V and then it will be shared amongst the 150 ohm so 100 plus 50 and 100 that one will take 100 portion so that would also be 96v also okay this is another way to, to do it um, for part c then what would be the experimental resistance so again assuming there's a student who doesn't know uh, the emitter is not ideal then what would he or she thought the resistor would be so uh, that would be thinking v equal actually actually well you may say he or she can still find it because if if that student try to use the V I mean from oops from the voltmeter which is 6V and then the current which is 0 0.06 then yes I think 
uh, he or she can find the resistance correctly but then if there is no voltmeter okay how about that how about if we take away the voltmeter so we don't actually know what voltage uh, is taken by the resistor then what happened instead is you may wrongly think that this resistor will take 9V because normally when the emitter is 0 ohm then it doesn't take up any voltage right so you think wrongly think that the resistor will take up 9V which is of course wrong so in that case you would think that will be 9V and then I is 0 0.06 and then the resistance will be R and so resistance will equal to 9 divided 0 0.06 which is 150 right and of course uh, you can see it is basically putting the resistance of these and these together all right so you overestimated the resistance and I hope again you see the reason why it will be ideal for our experimental measurement that for the emitter oops for the emitter it would be zero ohm because only when it's zero ohm then of course firstly the voltmeter will read the reading and of course this is basically what you want right all the 9v dissipated on the resistor and at the same time the currents will not be affected and also the voltage will not be affected so uh, i hope you can understand why instead of just memorizing the summary that for emitter it should have zero ohm for ideal and voltmeter it should have infinite ohm for the ideal voltmeter